I really don't know how to start this story time, but to let you guys know, this story time is going to mean a lot to me. Hi guys, it's been, it's been about a month since I've uploaded. A lot of you guys that have been subscribed to my channel know why that I have not uploaded. Um, I do want to take this time to apologize to you guys. And I know you, you guys understand as far as with the situation and circumstances. As a lot of you guys know that I have children in the Air Force and the Marine Corps. I was delivered the message that my Marine is no longer with me. Today, usually I have drinks before story time. Today I'm going to dedicate this one to her. She loved tequila shots and this is what we're having today. I also want to let you guys know that I'm going to most likely do about three to four story times and every drink is going to include tequila, a different type of drink, but today we're doing pure shots. Okay, as far as today's story time, guys, this is a fresh bottle. The seal has not been broken. We are doing Patron Silver. That's the way to do it when you are drinking tequila. Just breaking the seal right in front of you guys so you know it is a brand new bottle. Patron, you got Silver Patron, then you got that what I used to call it with my daughter, the high school tequila, which is the gold tequila. Whew. High school tequila, the gold tequila, boy, I don't know if you guys are familiar with tequila, but it usually leaves a bitter aftertaste at the end. Silver or Patron is very smooth um, when you take the shot. So here's our first shot. I am going to have a lime with salt at the end, but my baby girl, she loved tequila. She loved Patron. So this story time is going to include shots of tequila, all for her. This is her first shot. I love you, baby girl. Cheers. Cheers, Jazz. This is for you, baby. Love you. Alright, guys. So, this is a continuation of, if you've already seen our togethers, um, as far as explanation on what happened the night before, um, this is just a continuation of what happened downstairs, of what they were hearing. As far as with Art Together, if you haven't seen their video, I'm gonna go ahead and post the link below um, in the description. If you'd like to see that, watch that. Um, as far as their story time on this, please go right ahead and watch as far as what they were experiencing upstairs. As far as the night before clips of what I'm about to describe to you, I'm gonna post the link right above and if you want to watch that, go ahead and go watch that after this. Um, if you want to go watch it now, go watch it now. But today's story time, just going to go into a little bit more detail as far as what happened downstairs. So the night before, I invited, I invited Suzette and Martin over and Mason. And what we had planned for that night was to make my all-famous Walker's Potion. Walker's Potion. Damn, girl. Is it good? Hell yeah. I told you, and all this is, is in this there. Mine? It's all pineapple, kids. Yeah. Is this one mine? <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. that one's yours. Whichever one you want to take. Do it for the snap, no? And that drink, it entails of three different liquors, 
and I promised them they were going to enjoy this drink. Suzette's not really a drinker, so she was really excited about trying this drink. So they came over, let me back up, the morning of, the morning of Saturday, I spoke to my baby girl. I spoke to her. It was 8.03, the last time that I spoke to her in the morning. 8.03 a.m. Saturday morning. Um, she was with someone, I can't say his name for legal reasons, but she was with someone and I was speaking back and forth with them and uh, she kept disconnecting the call, she kept calling back, she kept disconnecting the call. I probably spoke to her about four or five times that day. So that morning that I spoke to her, it was 8.03 a.m. my time and it was 10.03 p.m. Saturday night, her time. What happened was, is we, we got disconnected. I don't know why, what happened exactly, but we did, we got disconnected. And, um, you know, she was hanging out with fellow Marines. I, I don't know exactly who all, but I do know one in particular person that she was hanging out with. Um, Suzette and Martin came over a little later that night. They came over, we went and ate pho. We were having a wonderful time. We were Snapchatting the whole time. Um, we were sharing our snaps with all of you guys. Can I have a little bit of noodles or no? Alright guys, we're gonna go ahead and enjoy some dinner. Time I'll check back with you guys when I'm getting Suzette drunk later, alright? <laughs> uh, we were doing dances, we were dancing to merengue, we were dancing to I don't know how to say it. Reggaeton. I don't know how to say it. But we were having a good time. And during that time frame, as I was snap snapping this, I noticed that Jaslyn was watching. She was watching every single snap. So I noticed she was watching my snaps and I was like, oh my God, my baby girl's awake. She's, you know, watching the snaps. And this was between the hours of 8.20 to 10.30 at nighttime, okay? Between that time frame. So 8.20 is about 10.20 her time. And then about, and then about 9.30, which is about 11.30 a.m. Sunday morning, her time. So, I noticed that she was watching, she was watching my snaps and you know, we continued the evening, we were drinking, we were having fun. Mason and I, we went ding dong ditching. <laughs> These two are too hype right now. They literally wanna go ding dong ditch a neighbor. <laughs> just telling Mason he has to run fast. They're gonna go ding dong ditch. Just for shats and giggles. Lord. <laughs> we went ding dong ditching and last and I came back in and I said you know I'm gonna call her it was 12 35 somewhere around there at that time and I called her no answer I said this girl so I called her again and I'm calling her through messenger Facebook messenger because in the military when they're overseas it's hard for them to be able to make calls um, I know there's a way around it but we didn't have that so we were we would call each other through Facebook messenger and and I received no answer both times that was a little sad but it is what it was I went on so 12 35 a.m. Saturday night Sunday morning for her was 2 35 p.m. her time okay pay attention to the numbers so 2.35 p.m., there was no answer. It was like two o'clock in the morning when Suzette and, and I decided, okay, let's just go to bed. And it's, you know, it's late. Martin was already asleep. He was over there all painted up with makeup, all swollen in the feet and hands. 
After brushing, restoring toe care strengthens teeth. <laughs> And so let's just go to bed. Let's just call it a night. So we did that. I went to bed. They went upstairs. And it was crazy because while I went to bed, it was, I heard something in my room. I heard like scrambling. And I was like, you know, like, you know, like somebody walking or something being pushed. And I was like, oh, and I looked. And you know, let me remind you, we had a couple of drinks by this time, so I was a little tipsy. I looked and I was like, I don't care. It's probably Mason coming to prank me or something, you know, because we were just having fun. So I went ahead and I, I didn't care. I just laid back down and went back to sleep. Four o'clock in the morning. It was probably about four, 4.30 between the time frame. AM, Sunday morning. The room was still. The room was quiet, as if I can hear electricity going through the walls. It was a different type of still. The air was very cloudy. Not visually, but it just sounded, you know like when you, when you can hear, but you hear in a tunnel and it just sounds like cloudy? That's what it sounded like that, that morning when my doorbell rang between 4 and 4.30. I hear my doorbell. Ding. But it was just a scary, scary sound. So I, I got up and I was like, what? what's going on? You know, so I came, I looked at the door and I was like, oh, whoever it is, they're gonna go away. They have the wrong house. I went back to bed. No, they're here still. And at this time, we've been having some home invasions um, in Arizona. Not really particularly in my neighborhood, but I've heard of them on the news. So of course I'm thinking, nobody should be at my door at 4 or 4.30 in the morning. Nobody. So I was scared. And I came into the gym area and I looked out. I was trying to look, peek through the blinds. And I, I saw movement, but I didn't have my porch light on. I couldn't look at the people because I have a, a airman sign on my door. So that's covering up the people. So I'm trying to look out the window. I see some movement and I said, there's somebody in my front door. And then all of a sudden, just bang, 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 bang. And I was like, I mean, seriously hard, like bang, 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 bang. And the bangs was not like a knock, knock. It was a open the door. And I, I, I was like, oh my God, like they're banging on my door. <laughs> so I was like, should I go get Martin? I was like, no, it's probably nothing. You know, I was thinking to myself, should I go get them? You know, and then I thought to myself like an instant, what if something happened to Jasmine? My Jasmine, my other daughter upstairs. What if like, I, I don't know, I just started thinking, what if she snuck out and then something happened and it's the police and they're here to tell me something's wrong. And then the doorbell again. And then the bangs. I called my neighbor and, I, and she answered, luckily. We're, we're all tight in this neighborhood. But I called her and she answered and I was like, can you look outside and see who's at my front door? Somebody's at my front door and they are banging my door down. <sighs> and she looked and she said, I can't see anything. I can't see anything, Brenda. And I was, she was like, I see somebody moving, but I can't see anything. So I went to the door, I said, and I had her on the phone. And I said, who is it? And then I heard United States Marine Corps. And I was like, I have to go. I told my neighbor, I have to go, I have to go. She's like, what, 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 what? No, I have to go. And I hung up the phone. If you're a military mom, or if you're in the service, you know what that means.
if they're coming at your door at four in the morning, you know what that means. So I was like, I hung up the phone and I opened the door and I peeked out. And I kind of had a confused face, like, you know, because, I mean, I did. And they looked at me and then I looked at them and they asked me for Brenda Walker. And I, I started screaming. I was like, no, no, I, I, I don't want to reenact it, but I said no, 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 just multiple times until it started escalating to big no's. Like, no, no, and then just started screaming. And I started screaming. And I started screaming. Non-stop. And all they could do was look at me. They looked at me. And I stopped screaming. And I looked at them. And I saw the guy's eyes watering up. I saw his eyes watering up. They were two Marines that were dressed in, they were dressed not only in uniform, but they were dressed in uniform. And then he lifted his hands and he had a red folder. And I said to myself, no. And then he started reading from the folder on how my daughter was fed. And then I started screaming again. I couldn't believe it. I didn't want to believe it. I spoke to her 18 hours before this message was delivered. And I had seen her on a video call. So I stopped screaming, I invited them in, I said, come in, and then I lost it again. <sighs> Let me remind you guys, my husband, he works out of town, he doesn't stay here in the home, he, he's, he's away at the time. Um, so I'm here alone. The only people that were here were Martin and Suzette, which were upstairs. And at that time, they were thinking a home invasion was happening. So I started screaming again, and that's probably when Martin was saying when he was coming down, he heard, you know, me stop screaming, and, and you know, he heard screaming, and and then he ran upstairs, so I, 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 I would stop screaming, screaming, stop screaming, screaming, stop screaming, and I literally went into shock, like my hands were shaking, my knees were wobbling, and I invited them in. <laughs> And I said, let me go get dressed because at that time I only had a big t-shirt on. And I said, let me go get dressed. As I was standing between them, they were in my living room, probably about three feet, four feet away from me. And I was standing in my kitchen, not kitchen, between my kitchen and hallway going to my bedroom. As I was standing there telling them, let me go get dressed, my door was kicked open. I don't remember the doorbell ringing. I'm not sure. I know Martin said that the door, he heard the doorbell ring. I don't think that the police officer rang the doorbell, but my doorbell, not my doorbell, but my, my, my door was kicked open. I guess I had left it still open, but it was unlocked. It swung open. All of a sudden, I had a gun pointed at me. And I had my hands up and I said, I just found out my daughter died and now I have guns on me. So I looked at the officer and he says, ma'am, are you okay? And I was like, I, did, I was in shock. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't say anything. And I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, and I kept pointing, and he was like, are you okay? <laughs> Meanwhile, he still had the flashlight up, he had the gun drawn, and I was like, and then the Marine Corps, Marine guy just came out, and he said, he, I, I, don't, I don't even know what he did, but he just said, we are here to deliver the death of her daughter. 
And from that point, the police officer, he had the gun up still, he had the flashlight, but his head dipped into his, his like armpit shoulder. And I'm sitting here with my hands still up and I'm like, I don't even want to move. And then he looked at me and said, I'm so sorry. And I was like, okay, I need to go change. So he put his his gun down and everything. He shut my door. He asked if, if he was okay, if, he, if I wanted him to stay. I said, no, that's fine. So I was going to go change and then all of a sudden the doorbell rang. That's probably what Martin heard, the doorbell ring. And um, the doorbell rang and then I was like, you know, who the hell is at my door? So I went to the door and it was the officer again. And he says, do you know a Suzette? And I was like, yes. And then I'm thinking he probably ran the license plate of the car that's in front of my house, which was Suzette Martin's car. And I said, they're upstairs. And he was like, well, I need to talk to them. And I was like, okay, is there something wrong? And he said, well, they're on the phone with 911. And I was like, oh my God. I said, okay. And I looked at him. And I'm remembering during this time of I'm in shock, I'm, I'm upset, I'm crying, I'm like frustrated, I'm like, what the hell just happened? And I looked at him and said, okay guys, <laughs> I did, I did this. I said, we're YouTubers. And he was like, okay. And I was like, okay. The reason why I said this is because Martin is still upstairs with makeup on, okay? Martin's still upstairs with makeup on. <laughs> So I go upstairs and that's when I knocked on the door and then they opened the door and I told them what happened basically. And then the police officer went upstairs and he, he did something with them. I don't know what he did. I don't remember. I just went downstairs and I sat down with the Marines and then they started asking me questions about our last call, about the time frames. I can't honestly say what exactly happened. because there is a huge investigation going on right now. So a lot of information as far as names, I, I can't provide, I can't provide what happened to her. I honestly, to this day, do not know what happened to my daughter. It's been one month and I still don't know what happened to my daughter. So, I can't give out any information, but, but with that being said, I mean, Martin and Suzette, I, I am so, I honestly am happy that they were here because listening to their story, I had no idea that that's what they were going through upstairs. I had no idea that they thought that a home invasion was happening. I mean, I, I, I'm glad that they were upstairs with my kids. I'm glad Jasmine was comfortable enough to go to the door and was like, hey, call 911, hide, because there's men downstairs and they have my mom. So, I guess, you know, as far as any information concerning my daughter, I don't have, because I just don't have it. But that's exactly what happened that night. These are just a bunch of screams. A mama's heart in pain. And me just in shock. So my daughter served, I'm throwing these outlines out there. My daughter served for three years in the Marine Corps, only three years. The time that I called her at 12.35 a.m., it was 2.35 p.m. Sunday. My daughter was found at 1 p.m. and she was pronounced dead at 2 p.m. So when I called her at 12.35 a.m., which was 2.35 p.m., and she didn't answer, was because my daughter was no longer with me. My baby is being buried November the 16th, 
2017 in Washington, Arlington Cemetery. November 16th. She went into the military, left for the Marine Corps, November 17th, 2014. She left and I'm burying her the day before she joined. There's no explanation, really. I mean, right now, I've just been trying to stay afloat. Guys, um, I haven't uploaded because honestly, it's been hard to pick up this camera. Um, I don't know how else to explain it, but literally setting up, picking up the camera, it, it really was hard. I am going to have professionals out at the burial. There are going to be some videos that have that are going to be released. I will still continue my military mommy support. Um, however, it's just been really hard here lately. So I just ask for you to just be patient with me. Okay. Um, there's going to be a lot of moving parts right now. I'm going to be in Washington for the next week. I'm not. I'm. I, I'm going to take things with me. It's just going to be hard to upload. Um, there's really no words to describe the pain. In the very beginning, I was, I didn't want to see anybody. I didn't want to look at anyone. I didn't want to talk to anyone. I mean, there was just no words that I can describe the feeling that I was going through. I was going through an emotional battle of just losing my daughter not knowing also what has happened, which doesn't give me any type of closure whatsoever. I'm trying so hard. I know a lot of you guys watch me on Snap and that's the only way that I can communicate with you guys right now. It's because it doesn't consist of me picking up my camera and it doesn't consist of me uploading, editing. This is gonna be pretty much raw. There's not gonna be a lot of editing done to this. Um, I know I'll be back. I just don't know how long it's going to take. That's the thing. I still have an airman. She's leaving. She's going to leave for Korea whenever she leaves my home. There's a lot of things I'm learning new about the military right now, especially about things that have happened to other military females. Not gonna get into full detail. But, November the 16th, please keep me, keep Jaslyn, keep my family in prayer. Think of us. Um, if you guys want, shout out Patron, November 16th, you wanna send me your video, I'm gonna prescribe my email, prescribe. I'm going to place my email in the description below. Send me your video of taking a shot of Patron in honor of Jaslyn. Corporal Jaslyn Walker. That was her name. And I'll tell you, I am the military mom to support a lot of my military girls' personnel. And I will find out what exactly happened. Her platoon, 4,005, the girls, we all came together at her memorial. Not all of them, but most of them. And I recognized a few from graduation day. Um, it's, it's a heartwarming, bittersweet, because these girls are close to my heart. I know the mother's pain as far as what they're going through. Um, you know, they're Marines. They often lead the way. You know, Marines are the first ones there. They're trained. They're trained. I don't know what else to say to close this out, honestly. I really don't. I'm just honestly still in disbelief when I look at her flag. I've been offered one flag. Her dad is a lieutenant colonel in the military, so he did request for a memorial flag to be given. 
um, we will be receiving another flag in her honor um, for service at her burial. That's all I have for you guys. Remember to take that shot in honor of Jaslyn Walker. I appreciate, love all you guys. Thank you for all of your support. Um, and just remember to take that shot and send me the video. And it will be in one of the last videos that I have. Here's one more baby girl. Cheers. One for you, baby. I love you. I love you always. Thank you, guys. We'll talk soon. I love you. So the glow strap means they're in first phase and they don't have a name tag because, because they don't rate yet. They don't rate their name. They have, to earn. they have to earn their name. Wow. Usually that comes around second phase. I don't know about each platoon is different, but um, typically they, you give them a number, a laundry number, and that's your number throughout boot camp that you keep track of all your stuff. And sometimes they will refer to you as your name or refer to you as your number. I remember because well, I was, I was in the Didn't, doesn't she? That's not even their drill instructor, that's a forming drill instructor. He's in charge of forming the platoon and getting them all the stuff they need to do. So they the essential issues and getting the next And then uh, getting their weapons. He's in charge of that for the first three days. So what day is today? Thursday? Yes. He's in charge of Saturday. Saturday is uh, And they wake up in the morning and get a big so they get a big speech, they decide to drill such a creed, 